that's in it. We may look at an abandoned building and see, oh my goodness, that's a problem. A shalom approach is to say, that's an asset. We can use that abandoned building to create something new in our communities. You may look at a vacant lot and say, oh my goodness, we have so many vacant lots and they're covered with litter. And a, a shalom approach is to say, no, this is an asset. We can make this into a community garden. We can, um, so we do asset mapping. The, if your church sits here, you can then identify all of the clubs and the associations and the institutions, the schools, the hospitals, the healthcare, the um, local businesses. So you go from your local community associations, your clubs and sororities, fraternities, to your churches. What other churches are in the neighborhood? So we train uh, clergy and lay people who want to be in community ministries to map what assets they have. Then the next step is we'll learn coalition building. How do you do one-on-one -on -one meetings with people to get to build those relationships in your town? It could be a few square blocks around a church, or it could be a long country mile, or it could be one zip code, or a part of one district in a city. So we teach, first of all, how to, cre how to find your assets in the community, then how to connect them, mm -hmm. connect the dots. And we find through experience that people, that most communities have everything that they need to thrive, to, to be self-sufficient, to be self-supporting, but people have, have, don't have the tools to be able to connect the dots, to build the coalitions, to work together. And uh, those are two of the parts of the training that we do. We also do, we teach people in fundraising, in, um, in assessing what they do, program evaluations and that sort of thing, um, multicultural and interfaith communications. Many of our communities are very diverse. So how do, how do, a Korean community work with the emerging Latino community in the same town, in the same block, in the same area. So we give people communication skills and uh, multicultural understanding so that they can work together in their communities. Could you share with us one or two examples of Shalom communities which are thriving now? Yes. I just finished a training, uh, six months, it's 30 contact hours. Uh, we go all day Saturday, once a month for six months, and uh, we just completed one in Macon, Georgia. I think is, in my view, one of the most exciting places to be in the Shalom movement at this time, because it's not just churches. The mayor of the city Mm -hmm. who happened to be United Methodist, who happened to learn about Shalom Zones as a model, decided to adopt this model for the entire city of Macon. They've developed six Shalom Zones hmm. in the city of Macon, East Macon, Pleasant Hill, Linwood Estates, all neighborhoods. They mapped the, the areas, they identified resources in the areas, and these six sites, which were commissioned recently, are now working on economic development in very incredibly poor neighborhoods. They're working on, they're partnering with Habitat for Humanity, with the city's uh, urban development department to build new housing, to eliminate um, broken down housing that has been abandoned. So they're working in partnership, the city, the the city and the government with local churches in coalition to bring about renewal and life into Macon, Georgia. And it's very exciting and the people are enthused when they realize we can do this. We have something good in our communities. As poor as the community may be, we have 
we have older people who are willing to be block watchers. <laughs> they have children who are willing to work in the gardens. They have unemployed men who can build houses. And when you put those pieces together, it's incredibly exciting. And um, Macon, Georgia is a great example. I'm going down. We're sending an intern this summer. I'm going down um, in July to see how they're progressing. Uh, and they've done things like public relations. That's another thing we do in the training, um, so that they can spread the word, spread shalom. And that's the difference between a movement with the people and a charity for the people. Hmm. This really sounds like an exciting um, event and activity that's happening in Macon, Georgia. And um, it's amazing that Shalom community has actually influenced the pol political process yes. and having the faith community and, and political organizations are working together hand in hand to actually address some of the very severe uh, difficulties, especially the poverty. Right. in the area. Do you have any other example of uh, something that is really working out very well as a Shalom community? We have a farm um, in, the, in the suburbs of Richmond, Virginia. Richmond is a relatively poor, lower income, middle sized city in the country. Um, lots of urban blight. Uh, it's what we call a food desert. There are very very few supermarkets and virtually no um, fresh gardens or fresh uh, markets in the community. So um, people have higher rates of diabetes and heart disease and um, stroke because of obesity. So uh, a group of churches got together in Macon and, uh, I'm sorry, in Richmond, and they created a farm, one acre of land all organic, all done by, by labor, physical labor, and all of the food that they produce goes to the Northern Virginia Food Bank to help support local ministries that have feeding programs. Um, so there's churches working with the local communities, and then they send the kids to help on the farm, and they learn the value of nutrition, they learn uh, how to eat fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so it's a holistic approach to a problem of, of food. Mm -hmm. And many people in the United States, while may not be starving, are nutritionally starving. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about somewhere near here, anywhere in New Jersey? We have a wonderful site in Camden, New Jersey. A few years back, Camden was the number one murder site. It had the highest murder rate in the country. It's one of the poorest cities in the country. Camden um, has uh, incredibly high dropout rates of, uh, for high school students, um, higher rates for health issues and, and uh, drug addiction, and is really um, has many, many problems in, in northern Camden. Fifteen years ago, the churches got together and started a Shalom Zone there. They evolved into a social service agency called Respond, Inc. And they have daycare centers now. They have uh, job training programs. They have worked on affordable housing. They're now involved in um, total the master plan for, for Camden. Again, church people working with the government, working with pol politicians, we often, um, those of us in, in churches, sometimes shy away from being politically engaged. But if we are seeking the health in the, our, of our communities are at stake, we have to work with, with powers and principalities to, to make uh, positive change. So in Camden, they were reactivated as a Shalom site. They um, have breathed new life into their work. So it's not just agency work. It has a theological foundation. It's working with the faith communities to address 
systemic issues in the community, not just relief care. Um, although if 